Okay, I know that there are a lot of people asking or wondering what an Android guy, I mean, I'm the, I am the proclaimed Android guy, has to say about this phone. I bought it with my own money. I'm learning how to use iPhones again. And I know I'm not a seasoned iPhone veteran or anything like that, but I just have one. Can, can I just ask you guys one question before we get into the today's show, before we get into the reviews of the new iPhones and all that stuff? Is it, is it okay for me to say that because this phone is so easy to use, because iOS, 10, uh, iOS 12 in this case is so easy to use, that that is what makes it kind of boring? Can I say that? <laughs> I think you could. I, I would agree with that. Because the it's, way that you get around... It's utilitarian to a degree. It's yeah, not cool, like, it's just utilitarian. Exactly. Like It's easy to use this phone. I know exactly where to go, but the thing is the way that I move around this phone is also the way literally every other iPhone person gets around their phone. There's not a whole lot of personalization to it. There's um, no personalization, no customization. It's, it's, it, using an iPhone is like trying to play a piano with gloves on. You can't do what you want to do or set things up how you want. Yeah, a little bit. And you know, I'm not, I'm, and I'm, this is the thing. Let me just say, that is not a knock on the merits of the phone itself. It's just a commentary on my own experience with it. Because let me tell you this. I might find it a little bit boring compared to my Android phones that I use on the daily. But I, you know what? I'm enjoying using this phone. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it. It's a, it's a perfectly good daily phone that I have very few complaints about. It's just not as exciting to me as uh, many other Android phones. Well, it's going to be boring and a little bit worse than previous iPhones if we have anything to say about that. So, hey. <laughs> yeah. Well, we do have a lot to talk about in regards to the iPhones, but there are a ton of stories in general. Uh, I'm going to go a little bit backwards when it comes to the, uh, the intro today. But first of all, hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 325 of the weekly brought to you by pocket now and xda developers on this day friday the 28th of september 2018 from facebook to twitter telegram to hinge oh my god hinges on here and all of the apps on your phone that you probably shouldn't be on anyways let's get talking about all of this stuff uh i am your facebook messenger joshua vergara what's going on everybody and in the booth today we have jules wong who i wanted to introduce <laughs> first <laughs> because many of the stories we're talking about today, he's going to have to help me out on because he happened to write many of them. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm the producer of the show, and like, I don't think we would have been able to get through a one plus six T rumor without digressing two minutes in and talking about like the HTC G1 because, of course, <laughs> it's it's a tenth anniversary this week. Yeah, I, I kind of missed my I missed my boat in terms of posting that on social media, but we'll get to that in a second. Uh, Brandon Miniman, uh, simple question here in the script today: Are you a Google minus or a Google plus today? Oh my god, <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so glad that I'm a Google in the middle. Google zero. <laughs> Google zero. <laughs> Google null. Google null. <laughs> no, exactly. And then Insta I made a Vetagram. I would say Insta Stories, uh, because the man does some stuff every single day. Obviously, I'm talking about the Pocket Now Daily. How's it going, Jaime? I'm doing great, man. I'm, I'm actually here. Like Brandon's in the other office. I'm actually going to have to close the door because of the feedback. If <laughs> you're going to be able to hear both of us within the microphone, oh, do it live. Let's see it. Let's, Let's see do it, it live. On Let's do it live now because I'm all set up because I'm importing footage for another video that we're working on that actually has a lot to do with the way you started the the podcast, Josh. Mm -hmm. That video is going to go live tonight after the daily, and so stay tuned because it has a lot to do. You're not the only person that feels that way, actually. Okay, fair enough. Um, I know that probably a lot of people in the live chat, I, mean, I should pull it up in a second, but I know a lot of people in the live chat are probably commenting right now. They're all like, come on, Josh, you, you're being too hard on you. Oh, what the hell, man? <laughs> but, I mean, <laughs> but I totally get it. There are there are reasons why this is such a hotly contested phone. Everyone has opinions on it. But another phone that everyone has opinions on is its competition and the number one phone in competition is of course the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. And according to Consumer Reports, it is at the top of the smartphone ratings, which is a pretty incredible thing to say. I have mine over here. Um, I've actually I taken have, the skin I, off. I have mine with the Rhino Shield bumper, which is my favorite way of having a note because it's like, this is such a massive phone. You actually don't want anything in the back and you can't enjoy the color. And so the bumper just like protects it really well. Everybody remember the iPhone 4, how cool those bumpers were where you had yeah, glass yeah. on glass. I think this is the best way to case a glass phone where you can remember actually enjoy. Remember Apple sent everyone a free bumper on the iPhone 4 because of AntennaGate? 
of Antenna Gate, which they're actually dealing with. I feel that that's a topic we should discuss, actually, eventually. Eventually. Uh, well, the Note 9, as I have mine here, right now my two dailies are the 10s Max and the Note 9. Um, oh, the Note 9... How do you do that? It's, it's not easy. My, my pockets are com constantly drooping. <laughs> <laughs> um, Does it mess with your L.A. style pants or... What oh well, doing? this is the thing. You know what? You know what is LA style uh, nowadays is um, fanny packs, but it's across the chest like this. <laughs> really? So you, men are allowed to have bags now. Let me just say that, okay? <laughs> All right, that's great. I mean, I've always been an advocate for the merce, but I mean, you could go with the cargos. <laughs> the cargos for that. Yeah. That we, we, that is something I haven't had in a long, long time. <laughs> I know, it, like XDA, it's like a it's like a uniform in XDA developers for everybody to bring cargo pants. I need to start doing the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, in regards to the Note Nine, um, uh, main, many of the reasons why this phone is uh, at the top of the ratings have to do with a lot of its internals. Obviously, it has the battery life that, according to the story, can last twenty nine hours, so it can go a full day without charging. Durability has apparently survived one hundred drops from heights of about two point five feet, which is like. I guess pocket area. How many phones? Um, who knows? I'm sure that wasn't one. That yeah. was not just one phone. Uh, clearly, it has a better camera than previous generations, and some may argue it might even be better than its competition in a lot of ways. Uh, zoomed photos, portrait modes, and whatnot. And of course, the final line in this, the only downside of the smartphone is its price, as now all important phones seem to be reaching $1,000 price tags. Yes, I'm basically a walking criminal, like like criminal's dream magnet. right now. Yeah, magnet, because I'm carrying <laughs> these two phones. Um, but yes, in my pockets are basically twenty five hundred dollars worth of kit. <laughs> <laughs> and you could rob uh, Joshua at this address. <laughs> <laughs> tell me something. I, I, have, I haven't gotten my my Nest Cam yet. I gotta tell gotta... me something, guys, because I, I actually cover this topic on the daily. Do you actually? I don't know. I first of all, Consumer Reports is another publication. They've got a great name. I mean, I feel that they found a great name a, a couple of decades ago. And it sounds like if they were a government agency, but they're another publication just like we are. And so, I, I don't know, I find it a little irresponsible to call it the best phone of the year when we've still got three months and about four phones to go. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I definitely think that um, I, I agree, especially as we have the LG, uh, Google coming up. And unless you count your years in some weird way, like from September to September uh, for any certain reason. I know that we are very Apple centric in the U S so perhaps that might be the case, but I, even then I think that strongly disadvantages any entries from November to December, uh, given that we have to cover these in a whole spectrum. Like the, the market is ever evolving and to have like some sort of arbitrary placement, even if it's for 2018, like yeah. like well, from January to December, like that's the weird. The thing is, there are so many phones that are, that are about to come out in October, and the to, to and you're right, Jaime. To to crown any one of the phones we have right now as the absolute best is really weird to do when you have one month of what is it like six or seven phones that is about that are about to be and, announced. And, and it's and bear in mind, this is not that I disagree. Like, is it the best phone so far? I have to agree on that. Could I would be, call yeah. it the best phone so far. No, no room for comparison. And it's, it's not that it's no room for comparison, because uh, like DisplayMate already rated that the iPhone XS Max has a better screen than the Note Nine, even if, oh. even if by oh. Sam's well, uh, <laughs> well. But here's the thing: like we know, like it's rumored, but it's not confirmed that LG is also building panels for the XS. So mm -hmm. we're we're not sure what panel they were using, or if it's LG or I don't know. It's 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 kind of hard, man. Yeah. Well, okay. In terms of the iPhone XS Max. Oh, actually, you know what, Brandon, real quick. Um, you're using your Note 9 still, right? No, I'm using uh, the <laughs> Max you, unfortunately. Oh, you don't have more than one SIM card? I guess that's my question. <laughs> um, I, I do, but I like to use uh, one, one device at a time. Uh, okay. Yeah. You're, you're not ADHD like I am. 
um, well, speaking of the iPhone XS Max, um, well, that's the other thing too, Brandon. I hope we'll get some insight from you uh, on the comparison between these two phones as you use them uh, over the next however so long. I've been using these two phones as my dailies, but right now we have the iPhone XS Max, which has a little bit of its own controversy because apparently, as we reported last week on the on the weekly, I should say, um, the iPhone XS and the XS Max happen to have battery capacities that are not necessarily where users wanted them to be. And uh, apparently the iPhone 10 still not really smokes, but it's still better than both of the new iPhones when it comes to battery life. Um, now, clearly in this chart that you're seeing right now, as Jules is bringing up, um, Android battery life is far and beyond <laughs> uh, what these iPhones are capable of. But just as, a, just as anecdotal evidence, I will admit that even though the battery capacities are lower than we might want them to be, the iPhone XS Max has been able to handle days without much problem. I will admit. Yeah. Here's, yeah. Something, um, here's something interesting. Um, the uh, If you look at the previous iPhones compared to their plus versions, the capacity increased like 30 to 45%. So like the difference between the 7 and 7 plus was much better battery life. Interestingly, this year between the 10s and the 10s Max, there's only a 19% increase in battery capacity. Yeah. Or well, in terms of battery comparison size, uh, when you compare the iPhone 10 to the 10s, it's taken maybe like a sub five percent drop a little bit. And you would hope that a lot of the efficiencies introduced in new hardware, such as the seven, uh, seven nanometer processor, would be able to uh, increase the efficiency, lessen the heat, and you know ultimately you would have much more battery uh, to spare. But in this case when the average in the whole category of smartphones, at least according to Tom's guide here, uh, doing its test on web surfing cellularly, um, when you have that average at 9 hours 48, uh, 10s max at 10.38, and uh, 10s at 9.41, that still gets you a good chunk of the day. Now, yeah. what? how much that extra hour or so might depend on I, what I you're just, doing I, later at night. But hey. I just God, these battery tests. It's like, yeah, we're like every human watches a video for ten hours until the phone dies. That's what every human does. Yeah. The um, biggest problem, the biggest problem is that battery life is so dependent. Like, for example, last night I was staying at a hotel that had zero cellular reception, like zero. It didn't matter if it was T-Mobile or or uh, or AT and T. They were both on the floor, and so if you have bad cellular reception in your area, your battery life is not going to be any better. So it's just it there it's just so subjective. Now one thing that I will say is for the sheer size of the Max just how large the phone is, I have to agree with Brandon that I don't understand why it's just 19% larger. Because like, you're getting you're getting 30% gains in the uh processor technically, right? It's a 7 yes, nanometer. Yeah, true, but it's it's not like if you're not getting gains in that massive screen, man. Like it's the oh, yeah. largest screen on a phone of its category. And so you've got more pixels to power. They could be OLED. It doesn't matter. It does. It, you know, I just, I feel that Apple it was too conservative. I, I, I don't know. There, there are reasons why I didn't order the Max. Um, I just, I felt that there was not enough benefit towards the phone to warrant having to put up with its size. Like in the case of the Note, I don't think it would be any. I don't think there's a better way to include something like the S Pen. Like if the screen were smaller and there was an S Pen, I wouldn't find it as useful as the screen being larger. So there's a purpose for this phone to be big. Uh, but then in the case of the 10s Max, it's just a blown up phone. No purpose for it to be big. There's nothing different about it. <laughs> no. I, I agree with you there. And um, yeah, that's that's been my experience, that I feel like I'm not getting much use out of this actual screen here that is more than what you would get on iPhone X, which I have used. Yeah. So that's the thing. Um, speaking of screen on time, I just wanted to show this real quick. Um, clearly, I have a problem with distraction because this screen time app is telling me that I'm using the phone way too much, and the most used app is YouTube. So. I am. <laughs> I, I am, according to the, the, what's that called? The screen, screen time. Screen time. I am psychotic. I, li I, I, <laughs> I check my phone. I check my phone hundreds of times a day. I'm not even kidding. There's something wrong with me. I need, I need help. But wait a second. You didn't know that? You didn't know that there was something wrong with you? I, or you did, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, this, is, this is on another level. Like, I've got a, I've got a problem, and I need help. 
Well, this, this screen is a very interesting piece uh, of, of the puzzle here because we're talking about the cost of the materials when it comes to the iPhone XS Max. And uh, we have an article over on Pocket Now, of course, uh, that deals with how the price uh, turns out the way that it does, even if overall the uh, the phone itself costs maybe $443 a unit to produce, in, in particular, the 256 gigabyte iPhone XS Max, which is the most expensive version of the phone. Now, the well, thing is- are... sort of the 512 gigabyte version but i mean that's oh, another discussion we could have for another day and <laughs> oh, that's um, true that's true there's 512 oh yeah yeah and the 1249 price tag but uh it's not really also a fair comparison when yeah. you're comparing it to the iphone 10 and in, i don't believe tech insights gave their uh storage capacity for that uh oh, okay. tear down but uh well, you... we're talking about 10 percent difference here yeah, and what I find so interesting about this is that um, the most expensive iPhone might still have a materials price tag of under $500 overall, uh, but it's not necessarily that the materials themselves are becoming more and more expensive. It's more like the housing costs and component housing rather costs, um, also mechanic costs. Uh, everything is getting more and more expensive to make, not necessarily that the parts are very high in price. Yeah, um, and, and and those pricings are every time that I read that I'm like, come on, guys, have you seen how much money Apple invests in marketing? Mm -hmm. Like, you you really can't just be like, yeah, the phone costs two hundred dollars to make, right? You need to make a profit. That's how businesses work. They're not just going to give you a phone away. They're not not every company is Xiaomi. Um, <laughs> well, it, here's the thing: is is that Apple continues to report. Uh, quarterly margins of anywhere between 35 and 40 percent so that's still a huge chunk so even if it's not you know the massive 60 percent here half of that they're spending half of that for whatever they need research development marketing that's, that's still a pretty good track exactly. record and, and, and that's the thing i mean to be able to build a phone like this to be able to build any phone you require a lot of money in r d so it's not like okay so the components and machining and and hand labor and this Oh, yeah. And so you think that they just came up with the design of the manufacturing plant, you know, just magically? No, you, yeah. you require R&D for all these things to be put together. And just think about it. It took two and a half years to build the first iPhone. Can you imagine how much investment went into two and a half years of labor and coming up with a product that will revolutionize the market? And I'm not just, you know, I'm not I'm not trying to, you know, give a salute to Apple, but it's true. Like any smartphone before the iPhone was not nothing. Like even Android was not what it was until the iPhone came out. Well, it's, I would argue it's the same thing with the iPods because they had made massive uh, margins on those too. And it has, it had been an iterative uh, process for them maybe since gen three, gen four. So yes, like you have to think more. about you, but here's the thing, Jules, back when you were, I, I would assume you were like three or four years old. Uh, when we was, <laughs> when we would have to carry Dismans around and these would skip like, uh, every, like whoever actually used the Disman would be, would like when people see the announcement of the first iPod, people don't understand how that product was so significant today because they don't understand what we used before the iPod. Yeah, yes, that's and, true. And what was being marketed at the time was very nerdy and kind of unattractive. It was terrible, it was yeah. terrible and there was in no in storage. Terms flat, in terms of flash, so, so yeah. to tell somebody that they could carry 1,000 songs in their pocket, like it was, it was unbelievable. Like I remember that I would have to carry this bag. It was called a click case. And so my disc man would go into it and then it had a spot for like five CDs because obviously there were no CD burners back then. So you had uh. to buy the disc. You had to buy the disc, and there was no MP3s. These didn't exist either. And yeah. So, like, it, it was this. It, people don't understand just how much the iPod changed the market. I, I grew up in the age of Kazaa, man. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, but, same. Um, I, I was like right on. I was born right in the cusp of that uh, of that change, and um, I grew up with CDs. But then recordable CDs became a thing, and then we started hustling by burning them and selling them. But. <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, man. I made but so yeah. much cash that way. Shouts out to Onkyo, <laughs> by the way. That's a that's a that's a brand you never hear anymore. That oh, that boy. that was my CD uh, player. My my non skip work. Like Onkyo, isn't Onkyo part of Technics? I'm not sure. I'm not sure where they're yeah, at right now. I'm not sure, but oh my god, the brand Technics, like in the '80s, you would pay thousands of dollars for a stereo system from them. <laughs> well, this this yeah. all reminds me of my favorite line from one of my favorite shows. I don't know if anyone here has watched Parks and Recreation, but uh, Ron Swanson in the show, he's very old school. He listens to records um, and, and you know, he's, he's very really old school. school that way. 
<laughs> uh, he's, he's really, really old school, like a man's man and whatnot. Um, but he had to leave his office, but he wanted to listen to his music still. So he shows up with an iPod and he goes, Tom, put all of my songs on this rectangle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We've come oh, a long man. way. But one last question I want to ask about this particular story of you guys, just a quick hot take. Um, I wanted to know, like, so we understand that there's R&D, there's marketing, there's all of this that goes into the price of the phones because of what they are. But just how much do you think what we might call the Apple tax goes into these phones? Just the fact that this is the brand we're talking about. How much of that do you think goes into it? It's not just that. So the reason why Apple is so profitable, so people try to understand why companies like Xiaomi exist. How is it possible that they only make 5% margins over their phones? Obviously, Apple is not making 5%. They're making 100% margins over every product. Like, like every business, if you buy a car, it's 100% margin. If you buy uh, real estate, they usually make that amount of margin. That's just the industry standard. Uh, the thing about Apple is they don't just control the product, they control the store and they make 30% off of every dime that is made. So if you renew your Netflix account through Apple, guess who gets 30% for that renewal? Mm. So the way so the, the way that Xiaomi makes money through their stores in China is exactly the same way that Apple is so profitable. It's because they control the whole banana and they tax not they, it's not the apple tax doesn't just happen in the hardware it happens in the software as well mm, i see yeah i didn't uh, actually I, I actually did not know that very specific piece of info there yes yeah, yeah, so some... it's, it's literally 30 percent for every movie 30 percent for every song 30 percent for anything that is sold within like if you do in-app purchases within apple they get 30 percent it doesn't really matter like that's the reason why uh certain applications like amazon uh had issues like selling you kindles like they force you to go to the browser because if not then apple gets a 30 percent cut over that ebook for example yeah. so, and netflix oh, is wow. testing the same thing with a web wrap uh, interface uh perhaps exactly or exactly to avoid the 30 percent cut because so just do the math i mean wow. how much so so just do the math if apple paid developers 40 billion dollars they got a 30 percent cut over that yeah. And it's, I mean, it's a pittance to say what they've uh, done to perhaps better the situation because I think it was last year that Phil Schiller was talking about uh, introducing subscription discounts. So if you're subscribed to a certain app with a service, uh, after years of um, subscription, Apple's cut drops down to 15%. But that is that never incumbent happened. on the user to stay with the app for 12 months consecutively. So there's a lot of stuff that could go, uh, go wrong with that. And you're not really guaranteed the results that Apple's dangling from you, which is why still many of these apps are struggling to figure out, okay, maybe I can circumvent this, or maybe we'll just have to deal with it. And it's mm -hmm. kind of crazy. Um, there's a comment in here that I think would tie everything together here from Roshan Chicane. Uh, it is stupid to think Apple became one a $100 trillion company by not cutting corners um i and i don't think that it's cut corners in the way that one would conventionally think no. in terms of its own kind of thing but it's able to cut corners it's cutting everyone else's within. corners no no no, no. okay <laughs> yeah. let me let me just say this let me give you an example there's a vehicle brand called lotus in in the i think they're they're uk based they make sports cars but they don't snap a v8 or a v10 engine on these sports cars they simply make a very light chassis and therefore they can put in a v6 and it'll be just as fast as your v8 or your v10 yeah. the fact that apple is capable of creating software that's so power efficient and so hardware efficient is not their problem they're just smart that's the way it is so they yes they have four gigs of ram instead of eight how is it that they're able to optimize iOS in a way where they only need four gigs of RAM to perform just as good as an Android phone would require six or eight? That's not something you can blame them for. That's just the smart way to make money, man. Well, maybe these cut corners, I mean, you might be able to uh, comment a little bit on this because our next story has to deal with the radios <laughs> that are in the oh, iPhone 10 and the iPhone, yes, the iPhone 10. Let's so talk about fast. that one. Yeah. yeah. So how, how, much, how, how much of a problem would it be if... Apple uh, apparently uh, may have actually taken some of the code that would support Intel modems from Qualcomm. Now, <sighs> granted, inside of the phones, what 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 we've discussed this a little bit behind uh, outside of recording podcasts like this and whatnot. That you know, Qualcomm radios. I mean, obviously they are 
they're, they're, they're hot pieces of kit that these Apple phones don't have right now. And it's showing because of the network connectivity issues. And now Qualcomm is filing the suit that's saying that Apple stole some of their code. Um, and, 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 and they did it poorly. And they did it poorly, by the way. Not just, I, I don't know, man. I It's very difficult. I, I hate these legal topics because I'm, it's not that I'm hating over the commenting it over right now. It's just, I hate going through these legal topics because it's, it's, you know, a lot of companies will just start throwing in their what what they assume is going to happen, and this and that. No, it's it takes yeah. a while. For There's a lot of prerogative. Yeah, there definitely. exactly. And so, but here's the thing. Um, obviously, if all iPhones are now using Intel modems, that somehow these Intel modems are using Qualcomm patents to be able to work on CDMA for Verizon and Sprint. So it's not, you know. Well, I mean, not, here, it's a very difficult thing. So this is all Qualcomm's claim. Uh, they have not sued on this particular claim they have added this uh, accusation as part of a brief for another lawsuit which is more patent related but you know if there is a lot of still proprietary code that mm -hmm. is not uh under a, a patent but also that you know that they're talking about that is perhaps maybe a trade secret or that could be a differently classified thing but uh, we go back to apple it is known for diversifying its part sources as much as possible to drive price competition between those suppliers and make sure that they're able to uh, provide, you know, for less. And with this, um, Apple and Qualcomm and Intel, there's been a lot of talk about how much everyone wants to pay or everyone wants to offer to be able to provide a modem. Uh, to Apple for its very, very popular iPhones. And I think uh, our next story, I was which about talks to say, about... Yeah. Qualcomm, yeah, Qualcomm talk is still positive that they can have a relationship with Apple still. Um, and what, what, I, what hope the, I hope they do, because I have a story for you guys. <laughs> well, right now the issue is over the price of the intellectual property. So uh, there is a precedent for this kind of thing where back in back in China, and we know a lot of Chinese manufacturers are prominently showing Qualcomm's name on the back of their phones. If you look at that Xiaomi uh, yeah. Mi 8 Explorer Edition, the logo is like right there in the back in the translucent backing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, but clearly there's there, there had to be some way for Qualcomm to provide their patents and also in a way provide their 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 products to these Chinese manufacturers in a way that actually worked for those Chinese manufacturers. So back in Beijing, there was a there was a claim that was made. Uh, there was there was a final claim that said that there has to be a lower rate that Qualcomm provides to Chinese manufacturers, which might add to the whole point that Chinese phones like Xiaomi's are generally a little bit lower in price when it come, when you compare them to their Western constituents. But yeah, um, Qualcomm is still thinking that once those things are ironed out, they could they could possibly come back into the Apple fold. Let's, let's hope they do because um, two things. Uh, so David Kogan and I, he was making a video, which I highly recommend. It's his iPhone XS Max complete walkthrough. Um, and he's like, dude, let's go run those speed tests of that video that you did for between the Galaxy Note 9 and the iPhone 10 to see how it performs. Um, so I brought the new 10s, which apparently in theory has 4x4 MIMO and Gigabit LTE. I don't know if 4x4 MIMO, but L Gigabit LTE. We brought the Note 9. We brought his 10s Max. And guess what phone won? The Note. The Note 9 by... God, so I was getting 160 megabits down on the Note 9. I was getting 68 megabits down on the iPhone XS, and XS mm -hmm. Max was pretty much the same number. I was getting 30 down on the iPhone X. Why is there such a difference, like, technically? Do you know? Uh, so it, the question is, what bands are support, supported by that modem? Does the XS and XS Max, do the XS and XS Max have the have all the bands that T-Mobile is now offering is the question because T-Mobile is the network that provides those gigabit speeds in New York. Sadly, I don't I don't know of any spots where I could go with an AT&T phone and get those same speeds. Uh, and viewers, listeners, if anybody knows, please chime in the comments and we would love, we would love to go test them, like no problem. Uh, but, but all I... Give me a second. Well, I was about to say. Give me a second, Jules. All I know is um is of that sector in 57 and 7. Go do, go run your test if you want. And so two things. The, that's the first one, you know, the differences in in battery life. Sorry, the differences in data speeds. And then guys, how good is your battery life on your 10s's 10s maxes, man? Cuz I mean, the battery life on on like people are complaining about the battery life on their iPhone 10s's and they're also complaining about the connectivity of their phones. That's another piece of news that's happening. 
True. Um, like I said earlier, battery life seems to be pretty standard for me. I haven't had any problems. Uh, I, I haven't had what I used to call the iPhone syndrome where you have to, the iPhone phrase where you always have to walk around and go, do you have a charger? Do you have a charger? <laughs> do you have yeah. a charger? Yeah. I haven't had that wall, problem. Wall hugger? You <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <In the> wall hugger? <laughs> yeah, But you know, I, I haven't had any problems with it. Um, but that said, um, it does seem like a gross oversight to me that there is not a fast charger in the box. Um, we don't even have to talk about the audio stuff because, to be frank, I do have a pair of AirPods, uh, so I do use them with the iPhone XS Max. Um, but, yeah, as far as power is concerned, thank God I have my own chargers because they do charge the phone pretty quickly. And, uh, and how about your Wi-Fi connectivity? Because that's the thing. That was like the thing I'm, I was going to say. Like, if I'm, in my, if I'm in the room of my apartment with the router in the living room, I get connection on every device, uh, on every Android device, but iPhones, they don't get Wi-Fi. I haven't had a problem with that yet. I have a, I have a Google Wi-Fi mesh network in my house, and um, I haven't had any issues with Wi-Fi connectivity. I know that uh, just a kind of a shameless uh, uh, shout out to um, um, Mr. Rettinger over at Techno Buffalo. He did say that he had Wi-Fi connectivity issues wherein he would leave his Wi-Fi network of his house, come back, and it would not automatically reconnect. Interesting. Um, I don't have that. I don't have that either. As far as Wi-Fi is concerned, I'm okay. I'm good. But when it comes to data speed connections, I will admit I did notice that it was slower um, when I was shopping at Costco. I'm such an old man, and uh, <laughs> a lot of good free samples. I was in line trying to download stuff for a game, and it was taking forever. They sell yeah. good rustistry, man. And I just wanted to make a complimentary point. Like, what technologies in you know that uh, T-Mobile network are they not perhaps supporting? Like uh, I think it's banned. I, I don't know what the num I don't know what the number of the well, band not just is. bands, but also uh, quadrular amplitude uh, QAM or whatever the four heck that by is. Four by four MIMO. Four by four MIMO was part of it, but also uh, carrier aggregation as well as a QAM, which Qualcomm also so, claims. So, as well. so, so to be able to do carrier aggregation, so gigabit LTE is possible through carrier aggregation. So. I, to my understanding, if you've got Gigabit LTE, that's how you get it done. Um, but the 4x4 MIMO is what I'm not sure if it's on the iPhone XS. That's the thing. I do know that every device with a Snapdragon 845 has it, but I don't know of of, uh, of the iPhones. It's research that we're still doing. Well, Qualcomm's probably- marketing. Yeah, I was about to say, Qualcomm's marketing is that all four of the uh, all of those, MIMO, uh, QAM, as well as uh, carrier aggregation, is their kind of package uh, of what they uh, classify as gigabit LTE uh, capability. So that's what they're talking about. And if Intel maybe has some code, but not all of it, or it's something, um, that it's weird. It's emulation. It, it is weird. And I, my, my device is the carrier on lock. What device do you guys get? I'm sorry. Say that again. Uh, my device is the carrier unlocked. Which guy, which one do you guys get? Unlocked. Um, and I've been wanting to put. Get, oh, yeah, the, you know, this is a good. This is a good time for me to ask the question. If I have a carrier unlocked version of the iPhone, can I put a Verizon SIM in there, or is it only a GSM? Uh, no. It won't, the Verizon SIM won't work on it. Which is the the. So I don't know about the 10s Max or 10s. I know that in in every in every device before the seven you couldn't. I don't know about the ten. Um, that is a good question because now it's just one skew. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna that, give it a that try. That is a good question because that's yeah. the thing. Like you can do it with an LG phone or a Samsung. If you've got a Verizon SIM, you could put a Verizon SIM on an on an AT and T Note Nine so long as it's unlocked and it'll somehow work. Yeah. Uh, because again, it's because the the Snapdragon 845 supports the CDMA bands. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas if you do it on, again, like my son was trying to do it with a seven plus, didn't work. Ah, uh, okay. Didn't work. Well, we're talking carriers at the moment. There is, there are a couple of last stories in this first segment, and one of them, the first one uh, of our two right now, had to deal with T-Mobile as we were talking about, uh, and their acquisition of Metro PCS. Um, now, it's not just an acquisition; it's a change to what they have acquired. Uh, it is Metro PCS, but now they're going to just call it Metro. By T-Mobile. I mean, we've already <laughs> been calling Metro for the past however many years since, you know, especially after the acquisition in 2012. Yeah, it was a while it's, back. Yeah, and they're, yeah. They're, they're kind of changing up the plans and whatnot. But this is another one of those incentivizing um, changes that we talked about a little while back. I'm trying to remember with who. Um, Sprint. Sprint was trying to put all of these different add-ons and incentives to their plans. And this is the same thing with Metro. Uh, apparently, you're going to get... Uh, 
Google One Cloud Storage with this, uh, also Google One, terrible name for it, but Google One Cloud Storage. Um, if you bump it up to $60 monthly, then Amazon Prime is bagged in as well. So this is a this is what could be generally considered a budget category when it comes to all the phones that Metro has, given their service as well. But does this make the service itself much more enticing if you get things like Google One and, more importantly, Amazon Prime? Um, very quick thing. Uh, Amazon Prime is a real a real benefit. Let me just say real quick because the other day they announced two hour shipping deliver uh, two hour delivery for free on Prime Now from Whole Foods. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> I'm stocked on butter now because of so because you got, you got ghee. <laughs> ghee. No, ghee and butter. Yes. Yeah. Um, but just saying, there is a benefit to it. So if you get Amazon Prime, there are some real tangible benefits, and I think a lot of people who discount. Amazon Prime are not really using all of the services that are included with it. So that's just one I thing. Don't. I don't. I don't take advantage of Prime Music. I don't take advantage of Prime Video. Yeah. I have never walked into a Whole Foods in New York. I should. What? Oh, okay. That's no. like my first stop every time. Because <laughs> I need to get stuff from my Airbnb slash apartment slash slash hotel room. So, um, yeah. but in any case, um, and Brandon, they're also. Uh, Oh, oh, go sorry. ahead. Brandon, Brandon has something. Yeah, I was going to say, Brandon, we haven't heard from you in a little bit. I wanted to see what your thoughts were on all this. Yeah, I'm just listening. Um, do you guys remember Boost Mobile and their tagline, Where You At? And they had like grannies do that. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> but I think that the slogan on this Metro by T Mobile isn't it genius. I'm like, no. <laughs> it's like, what, I, is, what is the slogan? No, this That's is slogan. genius. Yeah, Jules, just play it again. It's it's uh that's genius. That's it. That's, that's genius. genius. That's their slogan. That's I'm genius. like, that's what it is. What's wow. genius about that? Like really that's such a John Legere thing to, to say, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean they can't be the uncarrier, so I mean that's you know, it has to be something smart and uh oh that's genius. So I guess that's how they're putting it. Uh, and again, this cements T Mobile's kind of uh, presence in Metro because they've long relied on Metro um, T-Mobile's uh, network, so this just puts it in front. And also, uh, T-Mobile is trying to make the case that they want to be able to keep all of their prepaid carriers. So, uh, when talking about that merger with Sprint, they have three carriers that have more than half of the share of the prepaid market. They actually did an interesting move in um, a allowing customers to choose whether they pay before their term or after their term. So before the month or after their month, which is, oh. and that kind of this maybe disrupts, <laughs> if you want to say that generously, uh, the concept of a prepaid carrier. So that might be something to watch for in the coming days. Yeah, probably Pre so. Prepaid is great for the carrier because they don't have to deal with people that don't pay. You know, no, they can, in Latin America, it's the way to go. Like they, it's cheaper. It's funny, but it's cheap. It costs me the same money to make a call to the United States from Honduras than it does to call within Honduras. Just if I'm using a prepaid plan, because they just don't want to deal with the drama of be, of billing people. They just want them the money ahead of time. Yep. Mm, yeah. So well, the switch could be a little bit weird. It could be. Uh, speaking of weird switches, uh, apparently the feed on Twitter is going to be getting some changes, and oh, not to wow. say that anybody, <laughs> not to say that anybody has become very used to the highlights version of the feed. Um, you know, there are a lot of people who say this about Instagram and Twitter that when it changed from a reverse chronological order feed to a highlights feed, it was not a very well. Uh, received change. But it looks like Twitter is going to double back a little bit. They're going to go back to, for the most part, a reverse chronological order feed, but there is going to be a setting that allows you to, quote unquote, see the best tweets first. Um, so they are going to have a bit of a curation uh, that is added into the reverse chronological feed. But for the most part, you'll be able to look at things on a, from, a, from a, for lack of a better term, uh, historical context. So things are going to be based upon when they were last um, posted. Now, if you use something like, I feel like if you use something like TweetDeck, this was never an issue, right? Yeah, like yeah. The, the third party apps never got the um, the curated version. Yeah, exactly. So I I haven't, I honestly, I have not, aside from the mobile app that I use to post and maybe look at, make replies and do stuff like that, I don't look at that feed very often. Um, you know, sometimes the Twitter highlights come in and someone's like, um, I don't know, David Kogan and Brendan Miniman liked Jaime Rivera's tweet. And I'm like, what's that oh, tweet? Oh, God. <laughs> I, hate it when I, I hate it when I get notifications like, did you see what Joshua Vergara just posted? 
or this is Brandon Miniman's first post in a while. Have a look. And I'm if, like, you, if you take the time to look at highlights, they're actually pretty good. So if I care, I mean, well, if I, care I would that, be in here. <laughs> if I care that much about what certain people have to say, I would subscribe to their tweets and I would deal and with get notifications, the, right? The notifications, yeah. but hey, yeah, like, come on. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, okay, I'll admit that I go through the highlights a little bit. And since we have been talking about 10s Max uh, versus Android type stuff, um, I, I, I noticed that the highlights on iOS look different than the ones on Android. On Android, they have the swipe, like the magazine, the zine style one. Mm -hmm. And then on, An on iOS, it's just this like scroll of, uh, of, of, of the different highlights. Well, I thought that was interesting. Um, but overall, I think that... Yeah, I haven't had a problem with this. Like, I've, I've been looking at reverse chronological order since TweetDeck was a thing, so I'm not really. Well, worried. I mean, TweetDeck, <laughs> but you know, they never had the uh, the desktop version. Never had any toggles for uh, see the best tweets first. It oh, was that's true. It's mostly yeah. a mobile. Maybe that'll so. come. In. Yeah, because TweetDeck uh, uh, Tweet is owned by Twitter at this point, right? Isn't it? So. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe True. it'll get something like that. But maybe well, you know, the, Instagram has not made that 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 shift yet back to just reverse chronological order. I still see things from like 18 hours ago that I'm like I don't care. Like because sometimes it's sometimes it's stuff that's not relevant. Why are you talking it, it's dinner time. Why am I looking at breakfast tweets, you know? Like, um that's something I always notice when I look at my Instagram feed. I think Speaking Instagram of, Sorry, go for it. I was going to say, I think Instagram could do so much of a better job of putting in your feed stuff that might be of interest. They're like, I don't know if you guys have ever spent time in like the Explore tab on Instagram. There's so many Instagram accounts that I think would be interesting. I like cars. I like uh, <laughs> phones, you know, and like, why I, is it that all, all I get are women in bikinis, man? Why is it that I, I get was that? just about to say, <laughs> when you look at one bad, like the quote unquote bad thing? On Instagram, all of a sudden the Discover tab is all of that. Yeah, <laughs> thirst traps yeah. for days. <laughs> well, about? we are going to talk about Instagram some more, especially after some really big developments over at Instagram and Facebook land. But we are first going to go pay some bills. All right, where are we at here? All right. This episode of the Pocket Now Weekly is brought to you by Jamf Now, and this ad was brought to you by a local coffee shop. That's usually where our copywriter, Jules, does his work these days on the go. A lot of us do, actually, including people who run businesses. And if you're managing a tech fleet of Macs, iPads, and iPhones for employees near or far, Jamf Now is definitely here to help you out. With Jamf, you can distribute settings for Wi-Fi and email, standardize preloaded apps and data, plus lock and wipe a device from anywhere. After all, you had to buy all of those machines. So it's important to make sure that they work to your order, no matter where they are. So what are you waiting for? As a weekly listener, you can sign up and manage your first three devices for free. Do you need to handle more? It's just $2 per device per month. Start off by heading over to jamf.com slash pocket now. That's J-A-M-F dot com slash pocket now to get started for free with Jamf now. That might have been my best one ever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, really quick check in with everybody as we come back from the break. Um, just just quickly, we did hear a little bit about the iPhone XS Max from me, a little bit of the data connection test uh, from Jaime. Brandon, how's this past week been for you? Do you have a thought thread for us this week as you usually do? <laughs> uh, not, this, not this week, except that I'm looking forward to ditching the XS Max and uh, going back to my OnePlus 6. Um, now that Pi stable is out for the one plus six i'm excited to i have to out. install that yeah i've been hearing some really good things about it you should try it because the open betas were really good even the developer preview is good so i can't imagine how good the, the developer was. preview was terrible but then the open beta was was fine mm. i don't agree but you, whatever. you're 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 more an xda developer than anything that it was quite i'm just a guy that uses a phone i want it to be stable and it was stable but maybe <laughs> maybe you didn't flash it right out it sounded know. like something out of a rom-com i'm just a guy Using a <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just a guy who wants it to be stable. I think that's, uh, that's more so, of a so And you know what? I'm not talking about anything in Go for it. <laughs> I was just going to say, the uh, one thing that I will give OnePlus so much credit for is the thought that they put into their OS. Um, Oxygen is just a breath of fresh air, for lack of a better way of putting it. Uh, because <laughs> because for one for one thing, um, one thing I really dislike about the huge screen on the 10s Max is that I have to reach for everything. Now, you can do the whole um, reachability thing, which it's I had so to turn lame. on. It's kind of lame, right? It's hard um, to use. 
Yeah. And the thing is, like, you know, if I'm going to have folders in the dock to reach for it, and I, the Note 9 has this problem too, let me just say. I hit I hit the folder, then I got to reach up to hit my icon. On Oxygen, everything is down here. See, I actually, I actually don't like that. Really? Because <laughs> the thing about it is if, if the folder – I was about to grab another folder. <laughs> Uh, but if, <laughs> if, the folder, if the folder is like up, it, let's say the folder's up here, but then you get the icons down here. Like I hate the Note 9 throwing them all the way up there. I like how the iPhone leaves the folder close to where your finger is. It, it doesn't move. Yeah, but your folders are like, okay, th th then it's a very specific thing for me because your folders are like on the home screen while I have them down here on the dock. So yeah. a little bit different. Also, full screen gestures, I still hate them, but... This whole multitasking oh, I swipe. use that so much. You know so what? I'll admit good. that's not bad. And when I went back to the Poco phone, which I'm trying to finish the review of finally, uh, it not having that actually made me mad. So I'll, I'll, I'll give some kudos to iOS in that regard. Well, you know, you can just double tap the recents in Android. It does the same thing. It's not as fast and smooth, but you can do it. Not if you have full screen gestures on the Poco phone. MIUI, MIUI makes you swipe up and hold. There's no quick recents on on full screen gestures there got to turn on the nav bar if you want that got to turn on the nav bar right yeah all right cool so um uh i guess we can go ahead and get into our main stories because there's so many of them but they're all main, related main topic because main topic uh, okay fine okay fine jules mr i wrote all these stories <laughs> like, <laughs> all of these well, all, true. I mean, well there's well, here's all, the thing yeah so um facebook has had a rough kind of the past few weeks years? i mean years <laughs> to say the least uh you know elections and all that but also um the fact that it hasn't been generating enough profit and that caused a whole you know kind of 120 billion dollars wipe from its stock value in one day which is terrific i guess you could say um and then today we also had the uh uh, account breach, uh, 50 million accounts under compromise because of a site uh, vulnerability. So there's a whole bunch of stuff happening. Yeah, there's a story breaking like right not... now. I just got a notification that there was a hack today. Yeah, 50 million yeah, accounts. My God. It's amazing. Um, but the thing is that, well, it's not just Facebook because it owns Instagram. It owns WhatsApp, a lot mm -hmm. of apps that we uh, use every day. I know, Jaime, you, you're a WhatsApp fiend and also Instagram fiend. So, like, you're kind of encompassed by the whole Facebook um, clause not, of justice. I, 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 they just bought the apps. But the moment, like, right now that the CEO, the co-CEOs of Instagram have left... I don't know what's going to happen because the, the, I, I like the fact that they're not Facebook. Well, I mean, the thing is that there has been a lot of Facebook control exerted over it because the Wall Street Journal has been reporting that a lot of staffers were taken aback and that they had to deal with a lot of Facebook teams uh, overriding what they have done. Which is and the reason why I think the CEOs have left. I mean, I feel that they just were, they, they, a lot of the, like, you know, that recently in the quarter results call, like Facebook instructed WhatsApp, you have to make money. You have to figure out a way to make money. And WhatsApp has been reluctant to monetize. Uh, Instagram, With all the ads, yeah. in, Instagram, Instagram wasn't the same story. They do monetize, but they're not, God, like Facebook is like the, the crown jewel for gossip and just terrible media. It's like, but I, I know my parents love it, but <laughs> like, <laughs> they haven't been trying to hold to a standard, though. Yeah, indeed, they have been trying to hold to a standard. And I just had this conversation with a couple of our fellow influencer friends, if we get, if I can use that term. Um, we had a discussion uh, last we night over dinner. Talking to Michael Fisher because he hates that. <laughs> <laughs> Who is it? Well, Who you know what? Quick, quick, quick shout out to Trisha Hershberger and Jessica Naziri. They were the two that I was hanging out with because they're both oh, nice. they're both LA natives. So well, not natives. They live nice, in LA. Nice. Um, so we were talking about the Instagram feeds, uh, and one thing that they really enjoyed about Instagram was that it was very Spartan. Like you don't get inundated with all of these different feeds over on the sides or any yeah. of these extra links. It's just a, it's just all about the content. And Facebook has a huge problem when it comes to throwing information in your face. Um, and also that information may or not actually um, be relevant to you because let's put it this way on YouTube. It's very easy to know that if you want to follow somebody, if you want to know what they're going to be posting, you subscribe to them. But on Facebook, you have to like them. What does that mean? 
<laughs> like you have to hit the thumbs up like button and then all of a sudden you start getting everything from them when maybe you didn't want to like i didn't subscribe to you i just said that i like you so well you can weird. like them but also you can follow them or you can <laughs> exactly like them and, and yeah. then unfollow and then they you do can change like what the feed thing. shows you you can say like you know stuff that only you're tagged in and whatnot it's a crazy amount of information and with the ceos of instagram leaving a lot of the fears like you said jaime is that facebook is going to inject all of this uselessness into what is probably the only darling uh social media platform right now i just i can't wait for, to see okay. what the co-ceos come up with, with next because um sadly instagram has destroyed snapchat i don't know if sadly um but they just have <laughs> they literally have and uh I I don't know, man. I I like features like that are coming out with Android Pie and with iOS 12, where you you get to see how much you, how much time you spend on social media. Probably the worst thing about Facebook, and it's the reason why I avoid it, is because Facebook knows exactly how to keep me browsing their product. They don't care about you. They care about you spending time on their product because this is the way they make money. But they don't care if you're productive or unproductive, if you're making money or not. They want to make money off of you no matter what. And probably Facebook is the worst service to achieve that. So if this is the death of social media as we know it, because Facebook is going to ruin Instagram fully, then fine. So be it. I think that it will actually help me be more productive anyways. You know, uh, that that's just the way I see it. It's just it's it's. God, Facebook is such a bad service. Just it, you get to see how socially awkward Mark Zuckerberg is thanks to his product. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean that that's one of the controversies that has happened with this thing because you remember the unsend controversy that uh, they were testing. They were so quote unquote testing an unsend feature for Facebook Messenger, and a lot of um, Mark Zuckerberg's old friends kind of uh, were scrolling around and noticing, hey, these uh, messages from this thread have suddenly disappeared from Mark. Like, why is that the case? And it took a lot of uh, arm twisting for Facebook to realize that, um, yeah, we actually have discussed this feature and blah, blah, blah. It's, We're going to do it's this. Totally, it's a completely unethical service. And I think it's proven in politics and so many things. You know, so. well, that, that, that's the thing. Like, even even just this past week, uh, there was a whole segment of it on John Oliver's show on last yeah. week tonight about yeah. how Facebook has actually. And you know what? I I am Filipino. I date someone who's from the Philippines. Facebook is the free network in the Philippines. When you get a SIM card from any one of the carriers there, it comes with Facebook free. Oh yeah, yeah. The, you actually, so long as you don't browse photos, you don't pay for data. I know. Exactly. Wow. You don't that's pay for data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's inter it's very interesting what Facebook someone does with countries. someone with a borderline dumb phone could look at Facebook for free. Yeah, and it, it's crazy, you know, and that and that's how most people get their news because they otherwise they're paying for data, and it's it's crazy how Facebook has been able to insert themselves in that regard. I do want to go back to one point that you made, Jaime, that uh, you're looking forward to what the CEOs of Instagram are going to think of next, because as it says in this first uh, this first article here for our topic, they're planning on taking some time off to explore curiosity and creativity again, which yeah. is actually kind of the same thing that. The founder, or rather co-founder of WhatsApp said when he departed the Facebook board of directors as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? Jan Coombe um, says that he'll be taking some time off to do things I enjoy outside of technology. Oh, man. If only we all had so much money for us to be able to do that in our lives well, as well. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of burnout. What social media do you use, Brandon? Well, I use um, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Okay. So, so the, the big three. It was yeah, it was so funny. Last night, uh, I had dinner with Jaime, and then we we were walking back to the car, and he was he was saying how terrible Facebook is. But then he said, <laughs> but then he said, but I, you know, Instagram. I like Instagram, and I'm like, yeah, Instagram stories are so hot right now. He's like, yeah, you know, Instagram is such a happier place. And then and then we looked at each other, and he was like, oh crap, Facebook owns Instagram. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God, it's, it's I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing more integration with stuff uh, from Facebook into because isn't that what kind of WhatsApp has been kind of dealing with as well? Like it, it's it's still been able to be the messaging app we all remember, but isn't Facebook slowly just sort of like making it their own, making it tentacles? tentacles. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I like WhatsApp for what it is. I just um, there are certain things about WhatsApp that are not that are not perfect. Honestly, I wish I wish Telegram were more popular because I feel that it's the more complete messenger service. But you know, fair, fair. Yeah. Does it have video chat yet? Because yeah, I think so. Yeah, WhatsApp oh. does. 
WhatsApp right. does. Telegram it took a long does. line, a uh, long Telegram, time. I don't know. Telegram, I don't know. I haven't used it in a bit. Because oh, okay. nobody's there. It's like the BlackBerry Messenger. Because <laughs> I because I, I mentioned a second ago that you know being Filipino we know what Facebook has done to our country in, in a certain extent. So uh, Isa, my girlfriend and I, um, we we tried to boycott Facebook services, but it's kind of hard to because Facebook Messenger she doesn't have to pay for data if we use video chat. It's the worst. <laughs> yeah, um, it's, crazy. It's, it's, it's crazy. Well, one thing that I'm also worried about too is uh, virtual reality thanks to uh, Oculus being owned by Facebook. And uh, we've been talking about how virtual reality has been evolving, uh, if only in just the enterprise space, because that's where a lot of deployment can happen. And uh, there's uh, been talk about um, sexual harassment training and a lot of uh, these experiences being done through VR to perhaps increase empathy and to make it more effective than previous efforts have been to uh, prevent sexual harassment. And there are, there's been just the whole general thought of, you know, how these uh, experience, uh, experiences are effective at curing phobias, at making people go through certain experiences that they might not have before. And with all of that, like, I'm wondering, all right, so what's going to happen with Facebook and Oculus in the future? Because at this point, they're still well, on they, they announced the, the product. First... They well, announced they, the product. I mean, they, they're on the first floor of hardware, <laughs> but it's still a while yet before we find, you know, certain apps or categorized or something that can be commoditized and then exploited for services and whatnot. <laughs> Advertising. Uh, Josh, were Very, you in yeah. the... Were Very you, inflammatory uh, comments there, like exploded. Were, exploded. You the, were you in the uh, briefing of the LG G5 in Barcelona? I'm more than sure that you were there. I'm pretty sure I was, yes. So do you remember the VR approach from LG where it was like a pair of sunglasses? And then it had a USB-C a, cord. A USB-C cord where you would put your phone on your pocket. Yep. And then it was just so small, so practical. Mm -hmm. So I think that VR is not going to take off regardless of what companies do until they come up with a solution that practical, that easy to carry. Yeah, I don't there's a great good. art piece that um, I encourage everyone to see. It's from, uh, what's his name? Uh, Keiichi Matsuda, and it's called Hyper Reality, and uh, it's just a whole bunch of, uh, it's like the dystopian world of what if this was our lives, and there's just a whole bunch of stuff, lots of loyalty programs, oh. this girl, woman's on a bus, and there's uh, people talking to her, and it's just crazy. So I uh, encourage you to look at that. I can't wait till I can put in contact lenses and experience another reality. And you know what's going to happen? We're going to be putting our contact lenses and playing virtual ping pong. And then we're going to look off to the right. There's a table and there's going to be a Coca-Cola bottle. We look off to the left and a Walgreens store is going to be there because advertising in VR yeah, is going right, to happen. Right. We're just going to keep looking around and we're just going to be seeing Kylie Jenner everywhere. With uh, no. <laughs> oh, boy. Here's the pro. Here's the thing. I really wouldn't mind. So let's not talk about politics, but I, I guess even if I like capitalism, I guess I'm against the prospect of a future like that because of the capitalist need of companies to impress their investors. Because what's the problem that all these companies, what do these, these companies just come up with these products to figure out ways to sell you new things. And so it just, it deters from whatever enhanced experience you can have because they have to sell you ads because they need to make their investors happy. And so the problem is that there's a lot of lack of ethics because it's all about <laughs> making a dime. And that pisses me off. Yeah. I mean, I mean it's always, go ahead, Bryn. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, it's always been like that. There's a book out there called Marketers Ruin Everything. Anytime somebody has your attention, whether it's a billboard on the road or a commercial on television or a YouTube pre-roll ad or a magazine ad or, you know, newspaper ad, you know, marketers have to find a way to access people and and it's always going to be that way it's not i don't think it's like you know you made it sound like it's evil or it's not that it's evil it's just the purpose i so i i like the concept of certain companies wanting to no longer be public companies 
that they want to buy back and become private companies because they're pissed at the fact that there are a lot of things that they want to do, but their board of directors doesn't allow them to do it because it doesn't make investors happy. Short-term profits, it, yeah. That's it's that's that's what I don't like. It's that whole concept that we have to do it for the investors. We have to do it for the investors. Let's fire 30,000 people because we're going to let go of our hardware division because we have to make the investors happy. How oh, is that Microsoft. better for society? <laughs> How is that better for society? You know, so not. I'm not saying that everything is bad. I like the whole concept of the stock market and being able to invest. And it, there's a purpose for it. It's just it's been prostituted into making the investors happy at the expense of humanity. That's what pisses. And me it off. always it never has always been about that. I mean, there has been a lot. You mean you, you've heard the phrase over and over again to enhance shareholder value over and over again for these public companies. That hasn't always been like that. Uh, and if you go all the way back into like industrial times. I mean, again, we talk about Henry Ford and, um, you know, uh, giving his workers a decent wage so that he they can afford the product that he's selling, which was uh, the Model T's. So there exactly. was that. But then, but, then, but, then, but then even in those times, and, and let's move away from politics, but even in those times, <laughs> they needed to give people employment. So in, during the times of the Depression, it's not like let's figure out ways to not give jobs. It's to make the investors happy. No, we have to give people jobs for them to be able to consume. You know, that's just the way it was. Yeah. Um, the Bagana Weekly, like your Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> staying away from politics, staying away from religion. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I encourage you to read the book Upton from Upton Sinclair. And, and uh, the, the if well, that didn't generate the laughs that I wanted, but whatever. Um, also, <laughs> a, a good, like, a, you know, that, that is referenced a lot in this type of <laughs> a seer podcast suggestion for all of you uh, from American Public Media, uh, the people who make Marketplace, the business program on NPR. Uh, there's this thing called Mar Make Me Smart. Molly Wood, great host, uh, formerly of uh, all the places, New York Times, CNET, and then Kai Rizdal, who's just awesome in general, and they talk about a lot of this stuff. So, hey, just a podcast suggestion. Oh, there we go. And there's nice. some APM money in Jules's pocket. <laughs> <laughs> they were public media. They were not private. I can... No, just bringing it back to what we were saying. Like, you know, because you buy. <laughs> Because I'm trying to remember who I had this conversation with uh, recently is that um, what our or maybe it wasn't a conversation. Maybe I heard this on a podcast also. But um, the uh, we used to make money by providing goods and services. Now goods and services are easy to make because of automated processes. And now we make money by selling the things that have already been created. And, you know, but the thing is, there still have to be hands that create those things. They get paid much less than the people who sell the things that are being created. And it's it's, it's crazy how we've moved into this world now where everything is ad marketing and whatnot. Because I was going to make the comment earlier, I wish we could find a new way of monetizing anything, but it's always going to be based upon marketing something else. Um, that's that's the thing. So the, the only other alternative is that you know Facebook and all these other companies that are an ad platform can charge you to use the service, you know, that's the only alternative, right? I mean, yeah. how, else, how else can you and monetize? No one it? is going to like that. Imagine no, if all no of one. these free services, free data services in countries like the Philippines and Indonesia, all of a sudden said you have to pay for it, like like literally pay for it. You're paying for your phone plan, but then it's also you know $3 a month. Do, you do know, the WhatsApp thing. Wait a second. You know what's going to happen? What's going to happen is that you're going to end up using only what you need. That's what's going to happen. True. When you put when you put a when you put a uh, a selective wall up in front of somebody, they realize what it is they pr they truly need. Yeah, and there is some merit to that, but unfortunately, there's the other issue. And again, I'm not saying we should get into the whole politics of anything or economics or whatnot. But even if you create that, that makes users more mindful. They don't have the resources to figure out what they need. Exactly. So they're going to end up using consumption. All of oh my God, have we achieved that with this model? That we have. <laughs> Pretty much. God, I love your sarcasm, Jules. I love your sarcasm. <laughs> All right. So enough Facebook before we get into because you know what? The world the, yes, things kind of suck, but you know what? Let's I just mean, remember this, this podcast would turn into nihilism at some point. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Do it. So let's let 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 let's turn to something a little bit more light, a little bit more fun. Um, you know, you could you could you could take that with a grain of salt because we are talking about Motorola, and um, <laughs> and, three, finally. <laughs> and finally, three days ago, Motorola turned ninety. I kind of like this yeah. logo that they used here because it, it it adds in the infinity symbol and whatnot. And, you know that that's that, that's good marketing. That but that's a Motorola thing. For that's that not long, a though. that's not a Lenovo thing. That's a Motorola thing right there. That logo because I like it. Are they going to be around <laughs> for that long though? I don't know. 
it's a good it's a good question i mean obviously we are we owe a lot to the history of a company like motorola because of where we are now uh r and you know, owns like r and d and mobile like literally yeah like, we can we can thank the iphone all we want for the modern smartphone but we have to remember that none of that would have been possible without motorola yeah yeah indeed um star tech what the heck is the dynatech Oh God! So the Dynatac is the original smartphone, the the original phone. What? Sorry, the original yeah. the, the Zach Morris phone. The Zach that's... Morris phone, right? Oh, that's what that was called. That that the, you know, I, I, I have a antenna. feeling one day it's just literally going to be called the Zach Morris phone, which is a terrible thing. I mean, <laughs> it already is, right? <laughs> Dynatac. Okay, for yeah. our listeners and for our viewers, remember Dynatac. Don't just don't give Say by the Bell all the credit. Dynatac. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of our viewers and listeners didn't watch Saved by the Bell. I mean, that's true. That's true. <laughs> but yeah, but well, I, I, I have to say this: like my favorite, it, like I was even thinking, could, could it be possible that I find it on eBay? A StarTac seventy eight sixty. Oh my God, Doctor Martin Cooper. That, there you go. God, yeah, was that was such a good episode for Michael. Man, I can't believe that Michael was able to. To get that interview, which actually, actually, after that interview, Doctor Martin Cooper followed me on Twitter. That was great. Oh, that's awesome! Nice. <laughs> this might be Jules's way of telling me to step my game up as the host. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, I'll bu I'll book someone for oh. you. you don't have to. <laughs> Young Michael Fisher still in plaid. I'm so <laughs> proud of him. Now he wears <laughs> now he wears vests and reversible <laughs> and, and, and reversible um, uh, pocket squares and. <laughs> Hair doesn't even go up like that anymore. Fancy. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. So I guess I guess as a final like sort of note for our um, that's a weird way to put it because we're talking about Motorola. As a final thought for Motorola uh, as we end this show, um, what did, what would you say is your number one memory from this company? Ooh, We've used a lot of Motorola. Everybody, devices. everybody, everybody can start and let me be last because I have a lot of history with them. Let's, let's ask Brandon because Brandon, you're you were not necessarily uncharacteristically quiet on this, but I want to make sure you chime in more, man. <laughs> yeah, um, I definitely think it was the StarTac because it came in many colors. It had so many form factors, and most of all, everyone had one because the price got low, and people had them in holsters, and it was just. It was sexy. I mean, and it was the so holster small. was so sexy because it was the phone was backwards. You would only see yeah. the M at the front, and yeah. you could see like the sparkle of the light of service in in uh, visible. It was just the coolest thing, man. Yeah, uh, Brandon. I know that you have a bit of a harder out today, uh, so if you need to wave wave goodbye, just make sure you do so. Uh, let us know when you're on your way out. Um, all right, Jules. Uh, any Motorola? It's got to be the Hasselblad camera, right? <laughs> Dear Lord. Um, unfortunately, it's going to be a little, um, you know, recent, but not as recent as the Hasselblad. And it's the original Moto X, which I have never owned, but mostly just for the fact that Agreed. it was a Google product uh, Agreed, and they kind of fun. confused uh, their own ideas. They had Moto Maker, for God's sakes. Like, that, that so has cool. to be the killer app that for so that cool. thing. Come yeah. On. Hundred percent. Um, I was going to say the Moto X because of the Moto Maker as well, uh, but since you said that, I'm going to bring it back to the Razer. Um, I, I actually have some pretty fond memories of that phone. And if you look at a Razer right now, like if you were to hold one in your hands, does it not? Does does it feel? It feels different now. Like back when it was first out, it it had the sleek form factor and it was like click and it was nice and sharp because a Razer should be sharp. But when you look at it now, it's like. It's kind of it's kind of chunky. <laughs> it's kind of dull. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of chunky and dull. Like you know, but but my memories of having that phone were so. I miss flip phones. I wish we would get them back. Maybe foldable Same. screens will bring us back there. Like it's nice. I mean, Same. it's all contemporary though because you had candy bars back then, and uh, that was a little Same. little quicker. It's because texture, like like people underrate texture in our smartphone usage. It's part of the reason why I actually really like using pop sockets. And even though I don't have one right now, the whole idea of me like holding it, but then when I'm done, snap, 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 bring it down, like texture. So that's what a that's what a foldable phone did. Is like when you were done, you were done. Snap. I don't think a razor should be <laughs> chewy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 funny because um, so Motorola is not just in charge of innovation when it comes to the smartphone but the, the, in the cell phone business you know they started as the the first company to build a radio a car radio 
That's how they started. That was the first yeah. product they ever made. So they we had innovations there. Uh, we had innovations in two-way radios. Like the way we would communicate in airports, all of us had Motorola two-way radios. That's how we communicated. Uh, but I remember my first phone was a Nokia, but then because the cell phone carrier, most of the cell phone carriers in Latin America are owned by a company called Millicom. For those of you that don't know, Millicom is co-owned by Motorola. Uh, so, you know, that alone was the, one of the main reasons why there are so many Motorola products being sold back in the day, back in the CDMA days, mm. um, of, of the, you know, of the cell phone. And so, my God, I literally had almost every Motorola phone you could think of from the Vulcan to the Vader, to the StarTac, <laughs> to the TimePort, to Listen the, to these names. Like I wish we had one, these my names. My first one was the Multitac. And you know what? So here's the thing. Like right now we praise Apple for things like design. Like, does anybody remember the V60, one of the first metal yep. phones back yep. in the day, the Moto wow. V60? It was the first one with a secondary display. They used this, like, liquid type of LCD, which was, like, greenish, sort of a tint of blue. I remember my first text messages happened on a Motorola Time Port and, wow. you know, how they came up with ways to do T9 and everything. Like, all these were Motorola innovations, guys. And then they came out with the Razer. Probably the coolest phone that I, I think that Brandon took a break right now, but I, I wanted to get his chime on that. There was a phone that never. That, so does anybody remember the Motorola Q as well? Because because yeah. Brandon has it right there. And so just think about how many phones were so great for Motorola right before the iPhone came in. But uh, probably my favorite one that never happened. Brandon, do you remember the MPX two twenty? Didn't have a flip screen or something. So it was a pocket PC that had a, a screen with two hinges. And so if you could open it vertically, it had a special hinge where you could open it vertically and you could use it as a dial pad to make a phone call as a flip phone, or you can open it horizontally switching the hinge. And now it had a QWERTY keyboard that you can use for typing. They nice. canceled that, right? They canceled that, but you know, Motorola came up with these like daring designs. And that's really what I miss about them. The fact that they were just these really cool products, very thoughtful products. Yeah. That, Got completely got diluted in the simplicity of the slab that came with the iPhone. Like all those companies from that era, they didn't have the capacitive touchscreen. They were going in a certain direction, and the you know there was a, yeah. a total another a different direction when when the iPhone came out. And and, and, the, and then even when the smartphones came in, like phone calls on a Motorola phone continue to be better than anything out there. Yeah, it's like using that's the problem. A lot of people don't know what a what an, what an analog phone sounded like, but they sounded like an analog phone where you were literally, it's like if you had somebody, you were talking with somebody like right there, like right in front of you, it was that good. And that's how Motorola phones still sound today. You know, it's, I, I miss those kinds of things. I wish that Motorola didn't end up the way it did because I feel that it deserves more limelight. True. Um, hopefully maybe one day in the future, we're going to see that happen, but until then, and on that note, that is going to be it for now. Uh, I want everyone to remember that the weekly is just as much a conversation as it is a show. So make sure you make your voices heard either in the comment sections or by emailing us at pocketcast at pocketnow.com. Podcast, podcast, pocket what did now. I say? Pocketcast. And, uh, you said oh. for two weeks in a row, pocketcast, which we do not own and do not have the rights to. <laughs> <laughs> oh crap okay okay let me redo that again and on that note <laughs> that is it for now uh remember that the weekly is just as much a conversation as it is a show so make sure you make your voices heard either in the comment sections or by emailing us at podcasts at pocketnow.com okay can i just say i use pocket cast all the time so that's the reason why it's always on my mind anyway um you can also tag the cast on twitter there's one thing i want to say real quick before i give jaime's handle can we all just appreciate the shirt that jaime is wearing right now like look at that it is thank a parody of reebok but it's cowboy bebop that is the oh, coolest yeah. thing thank you oh, I've been that's looking awesome. at every, 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 it doesn't matter where i walk into they're like oh that is the coolest shirt i know yeah, yeah, it's so good. Jaime Rivera is at Jaime underscore Rivera. And Brandon Did you Miniman, get that ripped, by the way? What was what? that? Did you get that ripped? Of course, my friend. Everything. RipTheparel.com. 10% oh. discount. <laughs> there we go. Affiliate link in the description. Just kidding. Uh <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Brandon Miniman, who decided to go ahead and stay in for uh, the duration of our show, is found at Brandon Miniman. And I, oh, and of, we have to make sure, Jules, where are you in the script? Jules, of course, in the booth, our producer extraordinaire is found at Point Jules. See, he wasn't even in there, and I remember Jules, all right? And I, of course, can be found at JV Tech Tea. You know me by now. I love tech and I love drinking tea. Pocket Now is at Pocket Now at Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, and YouTube in English and Espanol, where you can find more news on the Pocket Now Daily and Pocket Now Adario every weekday. We can also. We're also on pocketnow.com for all of your mobile tech needs. We would certainly appreciate your feedback through Google, Apple, Stitcher, Pocket Cast, or wherever you happen to be streaming us, because without you, we would not have been able to make this show for your eyes and ears for 325 weeks straight. With that, we're going to call it on this edition of the weekly. Take care, and we'll talk tech again next week.